Moonshot has released another Kimi model and this time they have come up with this Kimi Dev 72 billion parameter model which has been designed for software debugging and issue resolution. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. In this video we are going to install the quantized version of this model locally and we will check out how exactly it performs. But before that, let's have a quick look at this very, very interesting model. And I must say that Moonshot always surprises with their somewhat unique models. And I have been covering them for quite some time now. They have been foreing into almost every modality, as you can see here, from audio to vision language to also some 16 billion parameter model with different long thinking and other sort of innovations. So I'm quite curious to see what they have brought this time. Now, if you look at this diagram from their GitHub repo, this actually is quite interesting. This shows somewhat um, a very unique architecture of this Kimi 72 billion. This centers around two components. One is a bug fixer and the other one is test writer. Both using a two stage process of file localization followed by code editing. This model is built on Quen 2.5 72 billion and underwent mid training on 150 billion tokens from GitHub issues and commits. The training focused on outcome based rewards from Docker execution results rather than code formatting metrics. They have also shared a lot of benchmark information. So if you look at this one on Sui Bench Verified, Kimi Dev has outperformed other open source models like DevStroll and Llama 3, plus various others, uh, including Gemini. The model uses test time self-play where bug fixer and test writer generate multiple solution candidates that are then validated against each other. And you can find all of this information in their GitHub repo and I will drop the link to it in video's description. Their model is also available uh, on Hugging Face. Now, this is a huge model as you can see from the files. I don't have the, uh, those many resources, but the good thing is that they have also released a quantized version which we can get installed and for that i am going to use this ubuntu system and i have one gpu card nvidia h100 with 80 gpu of vram i already have downloaded this quantized version from their hacking face card and you can see that i'm going to go with q6 which is a nice balance between performance and space and my 80 gb um, gpu uh, should be enough to hold this still this is around 65 to 70 gig of space uh, this model is occupying so hopefully this should be good enough let me quickly show you my gpu card so this is the one h100 if you are also looking to rent a gpu on very very cheap prices you can find the link to mass compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50 percent for a range of gpu so please do check them out and the tool which I'm going to use in order to run this model locally is this Ubabuga text generation web UI. I have done heaps of videos on it. So if you don't know what that tool is, how to get it installed, just go to my channel, search it, and you should be able to find that easily. If you already are aware, you can even use Olama or you can use Open Web UI, you can use LM Studio, and there are heaps of other tools. Uh, and if you, you can simply search on my channel and then select the tool of your choice. So I'm going to go with this Ubabuga. I already have it installed. As you can see here, I'm just going to launch it from my local system. So this is going to start it on my local system and then we can access it on port 7860. And this is our text generation web UI. From here, first step is to just go to the models on the left hand side. Just select this first uh, quantized file from here. And then we just need to click on load. It is loading the model. And it has finished loading the model. It, it even tells you the VRAM required in order to download the uh, load the model so it is consuming close to 65 gig of VRAM but our model is now ready to chat so let me just make it a bit bigger and let's try this out 
okay so now i am going to test various capabilities of this model as i mentioned this kimi dev um, has core strengths of bug identification code fixes test writing and real world software engineering problems so first up i'm just going to test it with uh, a very common problem of race condition so let me run this it is a thinking model so it is doing the reasoning where it is understanding what exactly is the problem and then it has already identified that it is a classic example of race condition if you want to check the vram consumption in real time you can see it is just close to 65 gig as we saw earlier and meanwhile it has identified what the issue is and it there you go so it is very very correctly going to fix it because it has already told us what the issue is this is original code and now it is creating a draft plan in order to tell us what exactly it is going to do so thinking is done it's a very controlled thinking and there you go so it's a very very nicely written code to be honest and these are the changes which it has done which are correct so very to the point very concise does the thinking goes a bit deeper um, without any test time scaling but i think already has shown the quality okay so that one is done next up let me give it another problem so i am giving it this javascript code and what i'm trying to do here i'm just trying to see if it can detect a memory leak in my production um, node.js based microservice so i'm just going to go down so it is thinking and there you go so it has identified that it is a node.js based microservice and it is experiencing memory leak it has an attempt looking at the code there you go so there's a map called session it's a very very smart model i can tell you and it is even evaluating different possibilities during its thinking um, process where it is slicing and dicing it it is self-reflecting checking out all the uh, probable causes and then checking different angles and very nice it has even uh, checked the clock out endpoint so it is doing multiple iterations on the code then you can see that it is focusing on the memory angle which was in our prompt and that is what we want our coding models to do to follow the instructions to the hilt so doing pretty well i would say it is identifying that it doesn't have any expiration logic so you see it has even given us an example around expiration and now it is thinking about adding a mechanism to periodically clean up expired session you know by following these models and their thinking train you can even learn programming so it is adjusting the code first checking out the login endpoint and then also checking out any any other possibility or alternative yep it is trying to improve it as much as possible a pretty good thinking process i would say and as i always say in this thinking model uh, video set this just looking at this thinking process is quite fascinating Okay, so I will let it run to see what exactly it produces. Okay, so after long thinking, it has given us the final answer and it is telling us what we need to install first. And then this is what, need, what we need to do in terms of session storage and all that stuff. And the whole code is here as how to do the proper session management. Let's also check out um this oh earth question where not only there is a security issue but i just want to see that it's such an opaque issue where uh, oh earth works in development but fails 15 percent of the time in production so i just want to see how exactly model thinks about these sort of random opaque issues which is not really clear and if you have worked in devops you know that these sort of problems occur on daily basis so let's see there you go so it is going um onto just like humans as what could be the possibility it 
could it be code expiry cluster consistency some latency some reuse prevention some sharding how good is that clock skew that's a good one and now it is suggesting that what the user should do in order to resolve this so look i think if you're looking for a model which could do some bug identification some code review some testing this could be a good choice really not bad at all and there you go it has done a wonderful job okay let's try out one final one where i'm going to check if it can do the security analysis of the code so i'm just going to remove this heading from here okay so i will run it and i will show you what exactly i'm asking it to do sorry let me go up so the problem here is that there is a SaaS platform that allows users to access sensitive profile data and security audit has found that users can view other users private info and i have also pointed it to the vulnerable code this is the one now i am asked and this is all the stuff which i have given it's a long code now i am asking it to identify the exact vulnerability there is also the attack vector which i have given it and i'm asking it to explain why this breaks authentication and then provide a secure test plus i'm also asking uh, it to follow these constraints that must be deployable without downtime whatever the fix it is suggesting and explain what other jwt vulnerability this code might have so and now look at the thinking so it is understanding the problem it has uh, also identified the attack vector which is insecure because it doesn't validate the signature that is correct it is talking about this jwt token and then it is um, thinking that but how to handle tokens that were issued amazing and then it is just thinking thinking it is reflecting on it it is going deep checking various probabilities reinforcement learning at its best and then it is also i think it's already on the right track and then it is checking its own answers so i will let it run and then we will check out and you see it is also checking various algorithms around hs256 and rs256 how good is that really good stuff and you can see that after long thinking model has correctly identified the issue here that this is a fix and it has also verified it and once it has done it is trying to answer my other questions around what what are their common this json web token vulnerabilities are there it is talking about that scalability statelessness self-containment which is quite good and now you can see that it is also running some of the tests and what should they return so this is the original code thinking is done and this is identified vulnerability which is correct mm. why it breaks it down and the secure fix is there well done and then there are some tests to verify it and it is little writing as per our use case and then this is a bonus which i asked it and it is talking about other potential json web tokens great stuff so look very impressive model from a moonshot as usual check it out and if you're interested in other moonshot models just search with Kimi on my channel and you should be able to find them please like the video and share it and if you haven't already subscribed please do so as it helps a lot thank you for watching